Uh, hello, uh, my name is Eke Kreimer and I want to talk to you uh, about my poster here about nonlinear isometric manifold learning uh, for injective normalizing flows. So this is a uh, joint work with uh, Professor Raul Tempone and also some colleagues from my institute, uh, Felix Rao, Alexander Mitzos, and Manuel Dahmen. So um, just in general, very, very general, um, normalizing flows as a standard method are uh, non-parametric density models for really high dimensional data. So the goal is to learn the distribution of high dimensional data sets, for instance, images, but also other maybe more scientific applications and to be able to describe the density function, but also sample from this data. And the way this is usually achieved is using um, bijective and differentiable transformations of the data towards uh, Gaussian distributions. So what we have then is a diffeomorphism between the data space and the Gaussian space. And because the data is, uh, that this transformation is diffeomorphic, we can use uh, this change of variables formula to describe the li likelihood function of our data explicitly. This is really a great benefit, especially for training. Mm. So um, this usually works really well. There's only one problem. Um, and that is many, many of the data sets that we encounter uh, in science and in, in images and so on and so forth, they do not occupy the entire dimensionality uh, that they're sampled in. So for instance, an, an image data set does not occupy every, every pixel uh, every, the width of every pixel. So um, we end, oftentimes end up with lower dimensional structures that we have to try and learn. And the problem about that is that um, using diffeomorphisms to project data onto Gaussians, that requires unique matches between the data space and the Gaussian space. So if the, the data space is somehow lower dimensional, we're going to have a mismatch between dimensionalities between the Gaussian and the data. Um, and when we train this, this will look good in training, but when we then end up sam sampling, we're gonna end up sampling outside of the manifold and that results in very noisy data and out of distribu distribution samples that we really don't want to have. So a popular approach on This is through dimensionality reduction and manifold learning in combination with normalizing flows. So the idea is to have a manifold learning model that finds the actual dimensionality of our data, projects uh, the data to a lower dimensional space, and then we perform the density estimation. <clears throat> well, and in the literature, there's a couple of ideas already out there on how to do this. What I'm here to tell you is that there's a particular issue about this, and this comes with the combination of these two problems, manifold learning and density estimation. And that problem is that manifold learning uh, require, has, if you do it by a, um, a, a residual metric, like the mean squared error, that is going to have a bounded loss function that's bounded by zero. If you hit zero, you have the perfect fit. Only the density estimation, we've, which we perform by a likelihood maximization, that one is, at least in theory, unbounded, and you don't know the global optimum uh, prior to your optimization. So what you end, have to end up doing is you have to balance two loss functions, two parts in the same training where one is bounded and the other is not. So that is going to lead to a lot of trade-offs that you don't really want to do, and it's going to lead to inferior fits. Um, so what I want to propose here to do about this is to use isometric uh, dimensionality reduction. And what this isometric dimensionality reduction does is it takes away the need to balance these two parts. And the reason for that um, is if we use isometries to reduce the dimensionality, these isometries, because they're distance preserving, 
they take away the impact of the dimensionality reduction on the density function. So um, basically what happens is the distribution as it is stays intact uh, and there's no distortion of the data and the space. Um, so this, if you look at equation four here, this giant Jacobian determinant term that describes how the, the space is distorted by the dimensionality reduction, that is always equal to one, simply because we're using isometries. So what we end up doing is um, we train an isometry to learn the manifold, and we can do that because based on the Nash embedding theorem, we, we don't have any losses associated with that as long as the dimension of the data is actually lower than the full space. Um, so we don't have an effect of the manifold learning on the density estimation. So we can train our manifold learning model separately from the density estimation model. And this is what I want to show you in this figure up here, figure two is we have first a manifold learning part and we can train that to really high, high accuracy. And then we can encode the data, don't have to think about the, uh, the, the dimensionality reduction anymore and then perform the density estimation. And the combination of the two is gonna build a really powerful model uh, for high dimensional data. So just to start us off, let's, let's look how, how this works. Uh, in practice, we've used the isometric autoencoder uh, to learn isometric embeddings with really flexible uh, models. So we can actually use neural networks here. And figure three, first model simply shows how this isometric embedding works. The left of figure three uh, is the original data. So this is a test data set uh, from this, this S-curve manifold data. And then we en encode this data into a two-dimensional space that you see on the right of figure three. And you see that we maintain this rectangular shape. Um, so it's really just a flatten flattening of this S-curve. The retransformation up back to the full three-dimensional space is then shown in the middle, and you see that we've pretty much preserved uh, the exact structure um, without, yeah. Okay, um, so we've also tested whether this is actually isometric. So we've we've taken the the expectation of our data set over or this expression of of uh, this Jacobian determinant term. And you see that is really, really close to one. So we can kind of expect that we will uh, generally hit uh, good isometries and we can actually, actually use this in practice. So just as a further motivation of how well this works, is data, and then also samples that we've drawn from our proposed model of combination of the isometric autoencoder with a normalizing flow, and then just the full space normalizing flow. So on the left, we have original data. In the center, there's uh, our model, which you can see preserves the structure really well, and recreates this S, S shape. And then on the right, there's a full dimensional normalizing flow. So that has full three dimensions. And you see that we're really, really struggling to, to reproduce this data set. And finally, to kind of highlight how powerful this, this model actually is, I also want to show you some results that we did with the MNIST data set. So if you're not familiar, it's this data set of images uh, that show uh, images of handwritten digits, as you can see here uh, in figure five. And with these four rows are, is the first row is um, our proposed model of nonlinear isometric dimensionality reduction using the isometric autoencoder combination with a normalizing flow. The second one is a little bit simpler uh, isometric dimensionality reduction using PCA. The third one um, is a standard normalizing flow. And the last one is just for comparison assembled using Wasserstein GAN. So from the top here, you got to say, uh, I interpret this uh, that the, the top row really shows great images that, that look like the original images in the data set. So this, like, this kind of shows that our model really is able to learn this distribution of data um, 
really, really well. So the second row using PCA um, in combination with normalizing flows, this shows that this, this manifold that we're looking at with the this is actually nonlinear. Although this linear approximation is still, um, yeah, it's still okay. You can kind of still kind of tell, okay, there's those are uh, images of, of digits. We just get some blurriness from, from the linear dimensionality reduction. The third row shows that the full space normalizing flow, at least in this case, completely failed uh, to describe the data. And the fourth row is kind of just for a comparison uh, with this Wasserstein GAN. It's, uh, it also shows that the, the GAN learns, learns these images, but they're, they're a bit ambiguous and um, not as easy to read as, for instance, the first row. So because this, this data here is just uh, exemplary, we've also computed some, uh, some metrics uh, for these um, data sets, namely the inception score and the uh, inception score. Um, and those also say, uh, show that we have very much improved results uh, due to this isometric dimensionality reduction. Um, so the inception score IS here, uh, so the higher you get, the better it is. And you see that um, <clears throat> our combination of isometric autoencoding with normalizing flows achieves roughly the uh, one of the highest values in combination with the Wasserstein GAN. Well, in particular, the full space normalizing flow really fails um, to learn this distribution. Um, and then the FID that actually compares the generated data with original data. Um, so that shows that our approach even outperforms the Wasserstein GAN and this metric. So we're, we're closer to the, the actual data set. So um, just in general, what I want you to take away is that Normalizing flows are really powerful models for high dimensional data. Um, and if you use, uh, if you want to use them on manifold data sets, that's gonna probably not work as well, but you can use this uh, isometric dimensionality reduction to really get the benefits of normalizing flows without having to compromise um, on the likelihood maximization advantage that we have. So um, I hope to see you in person. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, via email. My email is up here. Uh, thank you all for listening and take care.